Manvers Rotherham. Home to the UK's leading retailer of pop-up gazebos and marquees, Gala Tent. For over 21 years, the company, owned and operated by brothers-in-law Mark Thompson and Jason Mace, has supplied heavy-duty tents to countless industries. From marquees and outdoor trading to hiring and event planning, Gala Tent products have been a mainstay in outdoor settings for over two decades. In 2016, following a high-profile sponsorship of Leeds-based endurance racing team United Auto Sports, the company launched motorsport supplies brand Gala Performance. Over the next five years, Gala Performance would post phenomenal growth year on year and become a trusted name within motorsport paddocks. The company has worked with many great names during its rise, from holding title sponsorship of the popular Toyota MR2 Championship to long-term partnerships with the UK's major drift series, the British Drift Championship. And high-profile racing driver Max Coates. Its credibility as a motorsport supplier, however, largely comes from the fact that the company directors Mark Thompson and Andrew Scott themselves are also heavily embedded in motorsport running under the guise of Gala Performance Racing. Alongside Amigo Motorsport, Gala Performance Racing has competed for the past three seasons in the wildly popular and record-breaking series, the C1 Challenge. Mark and Andrew have competed at a respectable level and have so far peaked at second place on the podium. Last season, in two races that we did Donington and uh, Thruxton. Fourth, fourth. Um, didn't do too bad at Donington, which is a track I can't wait to get back on. Um, and Thruxton, I worked, that was pretty cool. Uh, so you see which in touring cars were on and everything, and then next minute you're on there. But quite looking forward to it. me and Mark have uh, stepped it up again. Uh, couple of seconds on his personal best, um, and hopefully a lot more focused in jobbing on, really. Every day, and it's been quite challenging you know, over over 12 Well, it's a good release, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, sometimes you think to yourself, oh, I could, could do without it, really. It's, you're yeah. not busy and got that much yeah. on. But when you're, when you're there and you have done it, it just shows what, what you can achieve when you think you couldn't achieve it. You, you mentioned that, yeah. As as everybody does get older, you, 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 well, you, you lose your confidence, you lose your confidence yeah. and obviously the way you're thinking. But one of the things Mal mentioned years ago when we had his MX5 and we were busy doing some training with Mark Ailes, it, it keeps your brain sharp. The series consists of a number of one-off races across the UK, with race lengths varying between three and four hours. These races run to strict regulations which dictate that all cars must largely be created equally so that driver skill is what sets each team apart, and a mandatory minimum number of driver changes and pit stops must take place per race. The jewel in the C1 Challenger's crown, however, is the annual 24-hour race. Originally held at the now-defunct Rockingham Speedway circuit, the 24-hour C1 race attracts big-name teams and drivers to come and participate in a frantic battle of dozens of small cars. In its first season of racing, Gala Performance Racing competed in the 24 hours of Rockingham, and with major vehicle damage, that they managed to complete the race at all was seen as a triumph in itself. Well, when, once you've done your stint, then really it's up to the other guys. You just you just want to get your, your head down and uh, recover for for your next stint. So, You'll find, you know, in between doing that, yeah, it's hard to switch off because your adrenaline's going, and then by the time you've done. Well, I think for the first hour, you one, to, when you first get out, for the first hour, you'll you'll still be involved with the timings and watching the race, and then you'll. Yeah. But then it'll start eating you, the tiredness will start eating you. Then you think, oh, I'm going to go and get my head down for a bit. That'd be better than 2019. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, and Mal, on his stint, absolutely 
wetty. Yeah, it's not nice when it's raining in dark. Mm. It's not nice at all, but every, same for everybody. You've just got to drive through it. The following year, the team were back to take on the biggest challenge of their careers so far, with the record-breaking 24 hours of Silverstone at the home of British Motorsport, where an unprecedented 99 cars started on the grid. The guys had prepared intensely for the challenge and we were all looking forward to seeing them out on the same circuit that had been tackled by some of motorsport's biggest names over the years. I'll be hoping not for a knock on my uh, motorhome door saying, and I jump up and say, no worries, I'll start getting ready. No, don't bother Andy. Uh, it's Granite Wall, which worked quite a uh, little bit when you're trying to get half an hour skip in between. But obviously, you come out a little bit dazed and you're thinking, what do you mean I'm not going to drive? The disappointment caused by the early end to the race, combined with almost a year away from the racetrack thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic, means that there is a massive sense of unfinished business between Gala Performance Racing and C1 Challenger's biggest event. And so, we're going to be back, ready to do it all again. And with the names involved in the team, there's a growing sense of possibility. Alongside Mark and Andrew will be three exceptional talents who have proven themselves on both the national and the international stage. Long-time Amigo Motorsport Associated driver and former Welsh Sports Saloon champion Rhys Lloyd is no stranger to success in C1, having stood on the top step of the podium several times. Good friend to Gala Performance and 2016 European Le Mans Series champion Christian England will be back alongside the guys to tackle the challenge. And former Clio Cup superstar, current Mini Challenge superstar and undoubtedly future British Touring Car Championship superstar Max Coates will complete the lineup for the race. With a team like this, we think we have every right to be confident that this could just be our year. Uh, P1 obviously. Win? No, it'd be great to get a podium. Uh, but I mean, I've, I know there's some good quality teams who's entered and there's some good quality drivers. So it, it, it's not going to be easy. But a 24 hour race, a lot can happen. I yeah. think you've got to have a bit of luck on your side as well. So who knows? But yeah, ideally we want a podium. With track time limited by the slow route out of nationwide lockdown, the guys haven't had a massive amount of time to prepare in the field, but it hasn't stopped them training and practicing as best they can in other ways. Didn't really much else can only sim work. You've done some sim work, sim haven't you? Work, haven't right, yeah. I've been doing some. But things have only just started reopening, so and to get a feel for the car again after such a long time out, they headed to Blyton Park to get one last session in before the big day. Completely different. Completely different driving style. It's um, You carry a lot more mid corner speed. It's probably a lot more confidence inspiring in this in comparison to the, the Mini, so yeah, you just carry so much speed in, it's a completely different technique, it's so much fun. It's race day and Silverstone is packed out with trucks and other vehicles as 59 cars prepare. The lads have qualified overnight in P13 which would have been even higher but a transponder issue meant that several of their laps didn't register but there is a feeling of optimism as well as nervous excitement as the green light approaches. Then after Mark I'm going in. It is still over the and then it's not fair. Max it's is going in. My wish. Then Reese is going <laughs> in. Wrong. We're not yeah, sleeping but... Show. 
long day, short days. Yeah. Yeah, it's all ready. Got it rock on. Right. The other car, new engine. Bought now, so I got it wrong. Christian is the man tasked with starting our race. And at 5:50 p.m. on Saturday, the 29th of May, we're off. And the other thing is, I want to be racing like interested in my own stuff, you know what I mean? At the moment, I've, I've got to, I've got to, it's, it's very easy to forget, to forget that bit and just be like, oh, I'm working. But it doesn't matter how much you sleep, 3 a.m. is still 3 a.m., right? Yeah, your time, your body clock just goes completely out of the window, so yeah. The first hour has gone relatively smoothly. Christian has made up five places in the field, has the seventh fastest lap of the race so far, and is only four seconds from the front. Spirits are high and we're feeling very optimistic. It's been a long time coming, but he's finally getting his opportunity to avenge the disappointment of the last time we were here. Keeping calm. Before the storm. So which way do I go? That way. Fast. Okay. You don't hit anything. That's Except it affects it. What's Mark pulling out of the toolbox for his stunt? Coolio. You look a bit warm, mate. Yeah, yeah it's warm, mate. And as soon as I lost that bit of gas, I could not get back to it. When I was down the way for straight, I was like six, seven, ten off my best. Just down that straight line. It's not going to be good, is it? No. Three hours and 20 minutes in. Catastrophe. The engine has blown with the pistons punching a massive hole in the side. We were hunting down the top three and now the car has given up the ghost. Mark takes the car off to a safe place and waits for the tow truck. So, I'm going to still drive because I might take that. If I'm not going to drive, I'm going to test goes. And I'm going to show you how to power drink. So <laughs> we get tent up and we power drink because I can't do that again. It's hitting in the car, mm. a couple of corners back, I thought it sounds like gravel, that I didn't go onto gravel, so two more corners in, coming back onto the straight, just heard a bunch of loads, like loads of gravel hitting the car, but obviously we just ended your bits. It's done now though, it's common isn't it, that's it, never going to make that back. Big puff of smoke, game over. We can't give up, the guys have put so much effort into getting here, we need to finish. The team get to work on ripping the old engine out of the bonnet. It's a race against time. Go 
long kaboom, oh, basically. Oh it's a 24 hour racing and sometimes these things happen. It's disappointing because we were in a, in a good P5 position. An hour and a half has passed. We've gone from P4 to P52 in that time and getting further and further away from the leaders. Past Mega Engineer with all the two pistons. The top five finish that was a very real possibility only 90 minutes ago seems like a distant memory. Yeah, ready? Yeah. Yeah. You gonna have fun? Yeah. Nope. It's just a bit, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? It's sort of like everybody's a bit down. Now the objective has changed. We're no longer in it to win it, but the guys aren't going to let it beat them. You better get out there and not f that. I'm, no I'm, engine I need, I need that. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Have we got all right? Yeah. 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 I don't need them. The new objective is to climb as far back up the field as possible. We're one of the fastest teams on the track. We have to have faith. Overnight, the garages grow quiet as mechanics, drivers and our film crew grab a precious few hours of sleep. No. <laughs> How do you think it's going to pan out? I don't know. <laughs> it's probably going to keep passing the engines or not. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I think it must have been needed. Oh, it busted it itself. No, we admittedly, it's starting to sound like in the video. It busted oh, itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're about 14 laps down, average amount. That's about half an hour-ish, just for 10 laps, so about 45 minutes down. It's, it's a case of now, other guys need to have problems that we did now, or safety cars. Are you going to I'm, I'm going to lay that foot telly on and just chill out. Alright, well, you're going to do that then. Thanks for that, Andy. Night has now quickly fallen, the track is awash with the colours of the strip lights attached to each of the mighty C1s that whiz around the circuit. Despite being one of the fastest drivers on the track in his stint, Max has made up a single place, but there's a long way to go. He comes into the pits in P51 and Reese Lloyd gets behind the wheel to take his turn in catching up. You come round the corner, so I was like... Yeah. I was pretty much pinned line. the whole way round, then slammed on it, and it was under, but then I'm not sure whether I went... You were slightly over when the guy was there with the gun. You've got, you got to push the boat, haven't you? <laughs> Reese takes a knock in the twilight hours and is forced to head into the pits to get the vehicle checked. Thankfully, there's little to worry about, so he heads back out onto the circuit. Are they all Dr. Dovington? Yeah. Um. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, <laughs> we, we need to do look, look tired. I don't really need to cry. <laughs> Despite the delay, he has made up another two laps on the rest of the field and continues to creep up the rankings before handing over to Christian during a safety car period and Christian begins his second effort. Yeah. Why you come in? No, I came in because it's time's up. Oh, right. Safety car, yeah. All oh, right, yeah. up, right. Oh, is the safety car now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get his best right. down. Okay. Well, they just said now when Christian went in. When you be the next 25 minutes, he'll be. Yeah, yeah, the window was uh, like 15, 20 minutes. No, no rushes. 
The mechanics quickly get to work on the tyre change and tape over some cracks that are in the car. Christian keeps up the strong push and all of our bad luck appears to be behind us. Or so it seems. The steering wheel has pretty much come off in his hands, but what looks like another hold-up is quickly fixed and he's back out. In the quiet air of dawn, Christian jumps out to let Andrew finally get behind the wheel to get his first real taste of competitive racing at Silverstone. After so many ups and downs of the last race in 2019 and the near heartbreak of eight hours ago. We're almost halfway through the race and it feels like we're cursed as a thick blanket of fog descends upon Motorsport Valley and the safety car is launched to control the flow of the drivers. Andrew's first driver, 24 hours of Silverstone, slows to a snail's pace as he sits in P44. How do you feel after your six hours? I feel on top of the world. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad of it. Andrew's experience behind the wheel reflects the subdued air around the garage. Only a skeleton crew remains awake and ready for action, which comes almost out of nowhere as an exhausted Andrew brings the car in. It's like flipping it, and it goes, and then it jumps all the way. So it's funny as like it was there. It was just it was stuck, pointing up on the windscreen. You know, straight. So it kept having to do that, and it was going. And I thought, you know what? Why am I torturing myself? I've got a great idea. I'm going to bed. Um, it was quite shaky at moments because really you went up a 17 and went <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed myself, the a bit buggered. I've had a laugh. But I'm Good. tired now, but. Yeah, I don't know, you don't want to be falling asleep. Either. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that fell off my gym piece and I was leaking. Oh. <laughs> well, that's all I was bothered. Get me good side, won't it? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, I'm good.
think so. We've had a sausage sandwich, so. <laughs> Have you had enough sleep? Please, yeah. Yeah? Alright, yeah. fresh as a daisy. Not sure as a daisy, but I'm, I'm fresh. Good. What time did I go to bed? About half two. And yeah. I woke up at yeah. half six. Yeah. I then may have slept in a little bit. <laughs> there. Well, but I'm here. When, when I went to bed, we were 50th. Now we're like 40. Four. Four. Yeah. Aim is top 20 now, I think, as a team. Yeah. That would be ace. They're supposed to start it like that, aren't they? That didn't work. They aren't supposed to start it like that. I can count it on two hands. <laughs> Probably 70 or something. Mark makes way for Max to go out and put a shift in for a few hours, having claimed back an extra two places on the field. Oh, again, catching them like mad. But oh, with the car. Oh, I know the car. He seemed to drop off last half hour. Seemed like we were struggling a bit. Power wise or handling? Power wise. Right. But, okay. And handling weren't too bad that I could feel tyres dropping off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like, stuck new boots on for him. Um, yeah, it has got on. a bit warmer, hasn't it? So. It has, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's still getting catching people up. Fine, Your so. lap times are good. Yeah. Six hours to go and three quarters of the race down. Max is currently fourth fastest person on the track and has gained an extra two places. Uh, how long was that before you went out? Um, I think about half an hour. Yeah. Half an hour and then I think we'll be back out. Yeah. Where do you think we're going to finish? I think uh, if we can get like climbing another six, seven places with me. Yeah. But we'll see how, see how it goes. Still a long way to go, and uh, six, uh, six hours to go. Yeah. Still a uh, fair bit can happen. Uh. Yeah, well, I've, I've seen a few uh, close to us that have dropped, that have kind of crashed out. Yeah. So a bit of bad luck for somebody else and a bit of good luck for us. And yeah, I think you've yeah, yeah, yeah we, right. just, we just need a good last six hours, right? Where are we finishing? Not at the back. Not at the back. Ten to six. Why? Where are we finishing? Silverstone. Finish mid third. Oi! Max's race is over and he's put in some excellent times as well as stayed positive when the team were at their lowest ebb 12 or so hours ago. He's out and Reese is in for his own last stint. Good morning. Hello. Hi. All right. <laughs> a better pit. A better pit. A better pit. Yeah. 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 Experience tells the me there is an the issue them. that's not going to get any better. So what, what I was doing, but I was breaking yeah. over, I was push just it. pushing on it. <laughs> Whilst things are going okay for us, it's not quite so good for car 337 from another team. 
Their engine has suffered the same trauma that ours did back in the early stages of the race, and ever the Good Samaritans, Rob and his squad of heroes offer to help out, performing what would turn out to be their fourth engine change of the weekend. Reese is done and he switches with Andrew who will now finally get a proper crack at the race. How many are on the car? How many are on the car? Well, it's three. Get off the car. And with the race nearing its end, the team begins the long process of packing everything away and putting it back into the truck. The garage is beginning to look very empty. Andrew is having plenty of fun out there. The pressure is off, but he needs to be careful not to get too carried away, as he encounters not one, but two collisions in short succession. He knows he was in the wrong for one of them and was sure to apologise to the team in question afterwards. Andrew has put in a superb display, holding on to the top 40 position despite his dinks and he hands over the car to Christian to see it home. I did flash and I went, sorry, and he went, all right, well, like that. That's the spirit of went to the ground, kept the car going. Right. The cars are coming towards me, but then I'll lever it and come out of the spin. Why are you fed up? I don't know, I've got two flashes. Less than two hours to go, and it should all be a formality. Should. It's not looking good. With a little over an hour to go, Christian brings the car into the garage. Surely, after all of the effort that has gone into the last 23 hours, it can't be over now. The mechanics get under the car and begin knocking. It seems that the minor collisions we've collected have damaged something in the front of the car. But even now, we're not giving up, and Christian is sent out once again to see out the race. The late drama of the damaged car has dropped Christian back a place, but he's a rapid driver, there's still time to reclaim our spot and reclaim it he does, flying over the line in P40. It's not the P4 or above that we had to set our sights on, but we did it. We finished the race with our heads held high. We gave it a real shot, despite spending over 100 minutes for the race in the garages. Some weeks after the race and after the dust has settled and we're able to take stock of the weekend, it's business as usual at the Gala Performance Office and the heartache is just a distant memory. Oh, right. 
Mm. So sometimes that from being in, we were in top ten, weren't we? Before engine went. Before. Before, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So obviously to go to that, your heart kind of sinks a bit under because you're not going to be, you're still competing, but you're never going to get them laps back, are you? No matter how hard you put. Um, we'll be back next year and hopefully third time lucky but I think we'll prepare a lot better this time because obviously all the teams are whereas the first couple of years ago they didn't prepare as much as they are doing now so you've got to get everything right getting back out obviously we've learnt a lot um, Andrew did his stint I did a stint so we'll take that on board for next year when we go back so it was fantastic having Max and uh, Christian. We have quite a good team and um, race. So we had they really well, and obviously that pushes me and Mark on as well. But 24 hours are uh, grueling. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're like mechanics, day in its sleep, but it's drivers. Yeah, God. and doing that many laps behind a safety car, I've got to be honest, that was tough. Because it would take us that long. It's right. foggy. Remember that. Eyes are going and you're thinking, come on, I can't wait for this stint to be over. But now everybody wants to win, but to complete the 24 yeah. hours, especially in that, yeah. uh, we're talking the Citroen C1, and you won't believe that gets pounded. Don't, don't have a minute. And it do, the, the cleaning does well, don't they? No, it has blue, but it takes a lot to, to do it, so. Gotta take the time back out and it, it's time you can really play an experiment. You're out at race, you, you're never going to get back in it. The, you can actually do, do some testing and try some new things, because yeah. like I say, you take that back with you next year. Like Mark says, we used it more as a test day. Learning process. Just learning, getting some good track timing, some seat time, so... Nah, we, we learned a lot out of it, didn't we? Yeah. 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 We, we, all, we all drove to a, a good level, and... But this time, it weren't a driver error. Engine went, and if engine lets go, it's not. Well, we haven't done anything wrong. And at least we all got some timing, didn't we, this time? Yeah. You did mention, because you had a couple of dinks in your second proper spin. Yeah, when I went out second, second uh, I think a lot of fatigue. But still pushing and still trying to, we well, still want to try and do good. Uh, I think it were Buffield, I think. I think it was a little bit too late at lunch, but well, you've got to try, you've got to keep pushing, haven't you? Just had to uh, come off uh, for another car. So I apologise to all that, but not right, sure, but they were quite a good banter between cars, and they were nowhere near as many um, trashed cars as they were in 2018 at Rockingham. That light bumper cars, didn't it? Uh, it was like 18, what, the first, uh, 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 first one we did. Yeah, out of like 54 cars, I think, at Rockingham. <laughs> I reckon there were only 10 cars that weren't like they'd been wrote off, so driver stands had come a long way, I think, and then uh, I had another incident on another, I can't remember, corner, coming out of Maggots and Beckett's, I think. No, not Maggots, but another corner. Late lunch, but I don't, I'm, not, I'm not right sure, right, guilty of that one, like, but. Got to keep going, but everything, everything all right. So, so oh, is there any? Is there any basically? What if when you when you think back to it, what's your kind of your memory? You know, when you're both chatting about it, when you just sort of if you're talking about it, what's the thing that comes up? Is there a is there a thing that? Well, there's just the disappointment. Like I say, we, we should have gone in with a specially built engine for that race. I don't think you can go in with an engine what you've done previous races with. It's got to be stripped and rebuilt for that twenty four hour. Yeah. So that's one regret. Well, like I said, we took a chance. Yeah. But we won't be doing it next time. We will use a, a built engine just for that race. Uh, but, but, like I said, there's a lot of positives because I, I was pleased with my lap times I were doing, which I know is, is good enough to be running top 10. And I know as and, Andrews is. So next year, you know, you should be already on the pace you need to be to be staying in that front bunch. Now we look forward to the rest of the season. The guys have showed that they have more than enough in the tank to give any team a run for the money on their day, but it just wasn't to be on this occasion. And as any driver will tell you, whatever happens to you out on the track or in the garages, that's motorsport. 
You take the highs and the lows with equal passion and determination. For every P1, there's a did not finish. For every fastest lap, there's a drive-through penalty. And we wouldn't have it any other way.